there's this old theorem in mathematics called Zermody's theorem, uh, proven in the 1970s. It concerns trying to find a certain type of pattern in a set of numbers, and the, the pattern is arithmetic progression. Things like 3, 5, and 7, or, or, or 10, 15, and 20. And Zermody, Andre Zermody, proved that um, any set of, of numbers that are sufficiently big, uh, what's, called, what's called positive density, has um, arithmetic progressions in it of, of any length you wish. Um, so, for example, um, the odd numbers have a set of density one half, um, and they contain arithmetic progressions of any length. Um, so, in that case, it's obvious because the, the the odd numbers are really really structured. I can just take uh, eleven, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen. I can just I can I can easily find arithmetic progressions in 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 that set. Um, but um, Zermody's theorem also applies to random sets. If, if I take the set of all numbers and I flip a coin, um, and I, uh, for each number, and I only keep the numbers which for which I got a heads. Okay, so I just flip coins. I just randomly take out half the numbers. I keep one half. So that's a set that has no no patterns at all. But just from random fluctuations, you will still get a lot of um, um, of arithmetic prog progressions in that set. Can you prove that there's arithmetic progressions of arbitrary length within a random? Yes. Um, have you heard of the infinite monkey theorem? Usually, mathematicians give boring names to theorems, but occasionally yeah. they, they give colorful names. Yes. The popular version of the infinite monkey theorem is that if you have an infinite number of monkeys in a room with each of a typewriter, they type out uh, text randomly. Almost surely, one of them is going to generate the entire script of Hamlet or any other finite string of text. Uh, it will just take some time, uh, quite a lot of time, actually. But if you have an infinite number, then it happens. Um, so um, basically, the theorem says that if you take an infinite string of of digits or whatever, um, eventually any finite pattern you wish will emerge. Uh, it may take a long time, but it will eventually happen. Um, in particular, arithmetic progressions of any length will eventually happen, Okay, but you, need that, you, but you need an extremely long random sequence for this to happen. I suppose that's intuitive. It's just infinity. Yeah, infinity absorbs a lot of sins. Yeah, how are we humans supposed to deal with infinity? Well, you can think of infinity as, as just an abstraction of um, a finite number for which you d you do not have a bound for, um, that uh, you know. I mean, so nothing in real life is truly infinite, um, but you know, you can, um, you know, you can ask yourself questions like, you know, what if I had as much money as I wanted? You know, or what if I could go as fast as I wanted? And a way in which mathematicians formalize that is, mathematics has found a formalism to idealize instead of something being extremely large or extremely small to actually be exactly infinite or zero. Um, and often the, the mathematics becomes a, a lot cleaner when you do that. I mean, in, in physics, we, we joke about uh, assuming spherical cows. Um, you know, like reward problems have got all kinds of reward effects, but you can idealize, send certain things to infinity, send some, certain things to zero. Um, and, um, and the mathematics becomes a lot simpler to work with there. I wonder how often using infinity uh, forces us to deviate from um, the physics of reality. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of pitfalls. Um, so you know, we we spend a lot of time in you know, undergraduate math classes teaching analysis, um, and analysis is often about how to take limits and 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 whether you, you know. So for example, a plus b is always b plus a. Um, so when when you have a finite number of terms and you add them, you can swap them, and there's no, there's no problem. But when you have an infinite number of terms, there are these sort of show games you can play. Where you can have a series which converges to one value, but you rearrange it and it suddenly converges to another value, and so you can make mistakes. You have to know what you're doing when you allow infinity. Um, you have to introduce these epsilons and deltas, and 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 there's, there's a certain type of way of reasoning that helps you avoid mistakes. Um, in re more recent years, um, people have started taking results that are true in, in infinite limits and what's called, and what's called finitizing them. Um, so you know that something's true eventually, but um, you don't know when. Now give me a rate, okay? So, so that if I have, don't have an infinite number of monkeys, but but a large finite number of monkeys, how long do I have to wait for Hamlet to come out? Um, and um, that's a more qual quantitative question. Um, and this is something that you can you can um, attack by purely finite methods, and you can use your finite intuition. Um, and in, in this case, it turns out to be exponential in the length of the text that you're, you're trying to generate. Um, so, if, um, and so this is why you never see the monkeys create Hamlet. You can maybe see them create a four-letter word, but not, nothing that big. And so, I personally find once you finitize an infinite statement, it's, it does become much more intuitive, uh, and it's no longer so so weird. Um, so, even if you're working with infinity, it's good to finitize so that you can have some intuition. 
Yeah. The downside is that the fine tie spoons are just much, much messier. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, so, so the infinite ones I found first, usually, like decades earlier. Uh, and then later on, people finalize them.